Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Astrology Dome. My name is Galit, and today I'm going to talk to you about the predictions for the month of September. As usual, I've created a mind map, and if you're not familiar with the mind map, I highly recommend that you check out this tool. It helps me organize my thoughts because there is a lot going on every month, and I need some sort of uh, structure to create uh, a coherent explanation. So I'm going to share my screen with you and together we're gonna go through the transits and all the ingress and the retrogrades that are going on in September and see how it's going to affect you. So let me share my screen with you. All right, here's my screen. And this is the mind map I've created for September 2022 predictions. And let's start with the new moon. We just had a new moon at four degrees Virgo. Where is this in your chart? This is highlighting a new beginning for you in your Virgo house. You know, the Virgo house is always about health and routine. Whatever is going on in your Virgo house will affect you and will affect your health. Because if we don't have a routine, if we don't have something that we are anchored in reality, in physical reality, this is the house of service where we service others. This is the house where we want to be perfect and do things right. So wherever that house is, if you're not happy there in fulfilling that house um, purpose, you can get very anxious. That's the other side of Virgo, right? You can get very disappointed, very critical about yourself not showing up. So how can you transform this new beginning into creating new health routines for yourself, which means taking care of your physical body and show up in that house department in the best way possible without putting yourself down because in the Virgo house, we tend to kind of criticize ourselves and always wanting to take ourselves to the next level, which is the function of Virgo. So this is a good function to help us become better in what we do. That's why Virgo always find flaws in things in order to create a better system. But if we put ourselves down and we're criticizing ourselves, this is not so good. So how can you take this opportunity this coming month in September when the sun transits through Virgo and upgrade yourself, but not in a negative way? You know, when we, you have this uh, negative chatter in your mind, putting yourself down for this or that, maybe you can pay attention and become more aware this month. This is a new opportunity to become aware of how we talk to ourselves in how we create ourselves better in a positive way. On the third, nine third, there is a first quarter moon at 11 degrees Sagittarius. First quarter moons are always about a crisis in action. We need to take some sort of an action. If the Virgo new moon started a new cycle for us, wherever that may be in your chart, the first quarter square comes and says, okay, so now what kind of action in reality can you take upon that new beginning? If in the new beginning we set our intention, I want this or I want that, then in the first quarter square, we're asking ourselves, what is the action that I need to take right now and, and, and proceed forward and progress? However, it's in Sagittarius. So Sagittarius, Sagittarius is always about truth your truth. Wherever you have Sagittarius, it's, um, you believe that this is your truth, but is it? You know, our truth is constantly changing and shifting according to what's happening in our lives and according to what we learn. So maybe this first quarter square is allowing you to challenge that truth and see maybe you can upgrade something within that a uh, whole truth, maybe a component would need to change and you would need to shift a little bit. Usually a first quarter square brings action from outside that prompts us to uh, take action from inside. That means maybe a challenge will arise and you will need to respond to that challenge. So I see that uh, on the 2nd of uh, September, um, Venus enters Virgo and that actually should have come before this uh, this square, but hey, let's talk about Venus entering Virgo. Venus in Virgo is a very delicate Venus. She wants to be perfect. She cares to be uh, refined. That's a good word for Venus in Virgo. It is a very refined beauty that Venus in Virgo is looking for. 
she's shy, more shy. She's definitely not the Venus in, in Leo that we just experienced. And uh, she wants to take care of the details and really show up in service to others. She wants to relate to others and service them and give them of herself. She cares. And it, she's very practical in Virgo. So love has to make sense. So while Venus is transiting your Virgo house, and let's not forget we are in the Virgo season, and Mercury will go uh, retrograde in Libra and Virgo, which are Venus and Virgo. So maybe this is a good time to find out what are the things that you value and are important for you and what are not. And what does the word service means to you? Because service is a word for Virgo, right? At that house, we are at service to others. What kind of service are you bringing to others? And especially when Venus is transiting there, it's a good time to find out what kind of output are you putting out there? And how are you sharing and how are you relent, relating to others? And what do you give them? It, it's this giving part of ourselves that we want to do for the world. So what is it for you? On September 9th, Mercury is going retrograde at, at, at eight degrees Libra, all the way back to 24 degrees of Virgo, which will happen on October 2nd, and then it will go direct again. Now, how appropriate is that that Venus enters Virgo and Mercury is the ruler of Virgo and, Vin and, and it's going retrograde in Libra, which is the Venus is the ruler of Libra. What is the story? The story is relationship. And how do we bring balance into our relationship? In a nutshell, relationships are coming into the forefront this month and obviously next month in October because Venus and Libra are the rulers of our relationships. So when Mercury is in Libra, we find it a little bit hard to make decisions. So pay attention to that because we keep seeing both sides. And by, be, by seeing both sides and having that quality and it is a quality because then we can bring more harmony if we consider both sides. Because if we always think that our side is better, that our truth is the only truth, then we bring conflict um, uh, into the relationship. Then we are not really listening to the other side. If we are willing to listen to the other side, to somebody else's truth and validate their truth, being on their own truth, and we're bringing more harmony into our relationship. We're bringing more balance into our relationship. You know, we, it, it's a tricky thing with relationship to validate the other without it being triggering to you because sometimes their opinion, especially in close relationship, is not in alignment with yours and it triggers you. So how can you work out the triggering without being abrasive, without being conflicting, without using your Mars to com combat and, and starting a war? How can you listen in a more um, loving way and accept that this is their truth and work your differences to a middle ground in harmonious way instead of going to war on something that may or may not be right. So pay attention to your triggers, this uh, Mercury retrograde in Libra. Uh, then Mercury is going back into Virgo. And in Virgo, actually, Mercury is helping us revisit some of the projects that we were just starting or dealing with or, uh, or we need to finish because that Mercury in Virgo is really good for detailed work. So maybe we left something open. Maybe it's time to revisit those projects and finish them and bring them to completion and pay attention to details. Overall, you all know that Mercury retrograde is not a good time to start new ventures and definitely not a good time to uh, sign contracts and go into any new uh, endeavors. But I, I, I want to stress something here. You know, life doesn't wait for Mercury to go direct in order for you to start a new venture. Sometimes uh, things come to a head just in the time that Mercury is retrograde and a contract comes your way and you need to sign it. 
what do you do? You can't tell your um, other side that finally you got the contract. You can't say, I'm sorry, Mercury is retrograde. I'm not signing. Within every Mercury retrograde, we do have a time period that is better to sign contract or to starting than the other time. So the, pre, the pre-shadow when Mercury is heading towards becoming retrograde is more volatile. Try not to sign contract or start things during that time. However, the post-shadow before it went direct, it is still retrograde in Virgo, before it reached 24 degrees of Virgo. This is called the post-shadow. It is a better time to start new things and sign contracts. So I just want you to know that there are better days to sign contracts and start new things, even during a Mercury retrograde. Don't put everything on hold. You can still keep doing your life. Then on September 10th, we have a full moon at 17 degrees Pisces. The new moon was in Virgo, full moon is in Pisces. The opposite, right? What is Virgo? Virgo is about the details, the practicality, the usefulness, being service, and taking care of our physical health. What is Pisces? Pisces is spirituality, is compassion is being together with the one, right? Going into the universe and feeling that oneness with the universe, being at service to others, but in a compassionate, loving way, maybe a selfless way. Pisces is all about our spiritual development and our mental health, right? The 12th house house is mental health, representing that part of ourselves. So, Our psychological and emotional nature is definitely affecting our physical health. So Virgo is physical, Pisces is spiritual. Both of those parts of ourself need to be in good relationship and need to be in balance and need to be healthy because otherwise we would give a lot of our attention to either side in order to bring that side into balance. So I think this full moon in Pisces is really complementary to the new moon in Virgo saying, how can you bring your spiritual and emotional and psychological parts into wellness? Because we keep doing that, right? We keep upgrading the parts of ourselves that need upgrade. So if in the new moon, we set intention for physical health in this full moon, we can see what effects our physical health, and sometimes it's our mental health. And mental health is made out of our spiritual and our psychological and our emotional selves. So maybe this full moon would be heightened and you could see something about those parts of yourself that needs more balance. So after the full moon in Pisces, on September 17, we have a last quarter moon at 24 degrees of Gemini. The last quarter moon is always about adjusting. What do I need to let go of? And what do I need to continue with? Because as we keep building our life, as as we keep building our mind and our thoughts and our information and who we are becoming to be and who we are right now, we need to let go of some unnecessary things, some ideas and thoughts and actions that ran their course and we don't need to take them to the next lunation or to the next version of ourselves. And this is what the last quarter uh, square is doing for us. It is letting us understand, especially in Gemini, letting us understand what information we need to keep and take it to the next level and build on it and what information ran its course and we don't need it. So what needs adjustment? As you pay attention, this month is a mutable month, right? We have a new moon in Virgo, mutable. We have a first quarter moon in Sagittarius, mutable. We have a full moon in Pisces, mutable. And then we have a last quarter square in Gemini, mutable. It's a mutable month. So what does it mean? It means that you can shift. You are finding ways to move easier. It's not fixed. It is mutable. It's allowing you to see all kinds of possibilities 
and shift within the realm of possibilities. It is easier to move your thoughts, your ideas, your truth, uh, your actions even. Everything is easier for us to digest and to shift it to a different form. The mutability quality allows us to transform one form to another. It's a beautiful dance that we can um, adjust ourselves constantly as we flow. And flow is the highest way for us humans to be in this life. Because if we get stuck, just like fake signs are, right? It, it's harder for us to change, to shift. So we get stuck for longer times. But if we are adapting, that's a mutable uh, word, adapting, right? Uh, new forms, new thinking, new ideas, new ways, we can try them out and see if we wear them well and if they advance us. So this last quarter square would help us to shift something in our, in our perception. <clears throat> then on uh, September 22nd, the sun enters Libra and relationship are on the forefront. Let's talk about relationship. People say, oh, Libra is all about relationship. What is relationship? What is the seventh house in your chart? The seventh house and relationship are you. Every relationship we have is a reflection of something within ourselves. We bring people into our life, all kinds of relationship, in order for us to become better, in order for us to see something that we cannot see just by ourselves, that we need the other person to be a mirror. I always like to say that the universe is a mirror machine, is an echo machine. And it is true. Everything within you is being reflected. So if you like your life and you like the reflection of your life, you like what you're doing and you're seeing around you, you're reflecting some good traits of yourself. You know, we all have gifts and challenges. So you are reflecting your gift. I'm sure you always have challenges as well. But to what degree do you reflect your challenges? I know some people that are in constant crisis in their life. So they are reflecting their challenges most of the time. That's why they see the crisis keep coming. Their patterns of thinking are reflecting um, negative patterns, challenging patterns, uh, limiting beliefs. And so they see it as a reflection. But if you work on yourself constantly and you become better, Virgo new moon, right? Work on yourself, work on your chatter, work on how to become better, how to sift through what's necessary and what's not and optimize your system, optimize your thinking th system. Then if you reflect your positive sides, your gift, then you start seeing more and more refle reflection, good reflection in your life. Things are falling into place and you are becoming more in the flow. You know, the flow is that state of being where you are flowing, not resisting. You are initiating um, you, whatever it is, goals that you want, but you don't have to exert immense amount of effort to get them because you're in the flow. So back to relationship. What is a relationship? A relationship comes to our life in order to help us grow in a certain way. That means anybody that we have that is close to us, intimate relationship, partnership, business partnership, people that come to you, your friends, they're all teaching you something about yourself as much as you are teaching them something about themselves. This is how we humans are wired. We are wired for relationships. So when the sun enters Libra, we have a whole month to see a mirror a mirror for the self. And this mirror can be through harmony or disharmony. It doesn't really matter because we see a mirror. If it's disharmony, obviously it is painful. So we want to adjust that and we want to address that. And that's why we have that sign, Libra. So we can see that. So maybe we are learning in this month how to be more compromising, how to bring harmony and how to see something about ourselves. I did it again, 921 Jupiter square Saturn. That's just before the sun enters Libra. I don't know, is Mercury? Yeah, Mercury is in its shadow. Look at me doing it upside down a little bit. Um, so Jupiter square Saturn. Jupiter and Saturn are the business kind of um, duo. And they always, Jupiter wants us to expand. 
our life and get our goals and be optimistic. And Saturn says, hey, there are restrictions. Come back to reality. You can't do that. You need to build a strong structure and there are limitations to a structure. So maybe this is an opportunity, especially in a square. A square requires some sort of an action. Maybe it's an opportunity to restructure our goals to fit our need to expand versus our need to comply to rules and regulation. You want to start a new business. You can't just start a new business. You have to start your accounting. You have to register the business in your county. You have to do all kinds of administration, Saturn. But you do have the initiation and, and the expression of will to start a new business, to expand, right? Jupiter, how can you bring them together? Opportunity to restructure your goals. On the 23rd, Mercury is going back into Virgo, retrograde, revisiting old project. And I wrote here, don't get stuck in perfectionism. And why is that? Perfectionism is us wanting to do something the best, right? Perfectionism is pushing us to say, this is not good enough. And when we say this is not good enough, we are always stuck in the past because we believe there is some sort of an image that we believe, some sort of a belief that we need to show up better, which is a good belief, right? To do things on the best side is great. But again, to what level? Is this belief getting you stuck and you start procrastinating and constantly trying to say this is not good enough, putting yourself down, criticizing yourself and never showing up with the final product? because there is no end to good enough. We can always take it to the next level. But when is it good enough for you to show results? Nothing is perfect, right? You, you, you need to know that by now, nothing is perfect. When is the balance point where you can show results that you would feel that are good enough, yet they may not be perfect. So pay attention to this theme. If it reoccurs in your life, maybe it reoccurs in other places in your life, then pay attention. It's a good learning experience. So revisit your project, bring them to completion, to good enough place, and show up results in the world. After all, Mercury in Virgo wants you to be efficient and useful. It wants you to show results. Then on the 25th, we have a new moon in Libra to degrees Libra. This is a reoccurring theme for this month, isn't it? When Venus goes into Libra, Mercury into Libra, and then the new moon is in Libra. Again, relationship, take charge of relationship. And I wrote a few things, give relationship a new definition. Maybe it's time for us to realize that relationship is, first of all, with ourselves. The quality of the relationship that we have with ourselves will be the quality of the relationship that we have with others. So it's time to work up on our relationship to ourselves as well as to others. Learn resolution of conflicts. This is a great skill, always a great skill, because as we navigate life, we navigate it through many, many, many people, many relationships. It's always good to bring resolutions and learn new partnership skills. Again, going back to the self, how can I become a better partner? First to myself and then to others. And then Venus, the ruler of Libra, enters Libra on September 29. And I think this time it's about self-love and care because this is the reoccurring theme of the month. So how can I do self-care and love for myself versus care for others? And there is a balance. Again, a Libra word, balance. Learning a greater balance. Yeah, of course, balance is the key word for this month. And I wrote, be grateful for the beauty in life. Focus on it. What you focus on is happening more in your life. You focus on lack, you get more lack. You focus on crisis, you get more crisis. You focus on beauty and harmony and care for others and yourself and relationship and love, you get more of that. What do you focus on? And maybe this month is a good month to shift our focus from not good enough to very good enough, right? This is the balance. Where are you on this axis from not good to very good? Where are you? And where do you want to be? So I really think that the theme, the main theme of this month in this lunation is a beautiful theme saying, you know, 
put the details in the plan, Mercury and Virgo, create an efficient plan, Mercury and Virgo, Sun in Virgo, make it useful, make it good and show up with results, Sun in Virgo, but, and be practical, of course, but all this relationship issue, right? Venus uh, going into Libra, then we have the Sun in Libra, then Mercury is going retrograde in Libra. How do we bring balance into our relationship with ourselves? How can we bring to light uh, those shadow parts of ourselves that are keeping us spiritually, mentally, and physically uh, back and stuck maybe? Where do you need to change those patterns? Where are you stuck? Maybe this is a good month to pay attention to the details of what is getting you stuck? What is holding you back? And bring it to the forefront to be worked on and create this new platform of feeling in, in harmony with yourself first, because this will attract more harmony from the world, from your relationship. And that's what we all want, to be in harmony, to get love, to be loved, to give love, this sharing, this being in the flow. So pay attention to what is still holding you back. It could be a psychological pattern. It could be um, an outdated truth, limiting belief. It could be a, a relationship pattern, an old relationship pattern that you have learned in childhood and is not necessarily serving you anymore. How can you take that and unpack it and heal that part of yourself and bring it to where you want to be? Where do you want to be this next month in your relationship with yourself and your relationship with others? This is the theme. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. And please click on the notification button so you can get every update that I upload. And as usual, enjoy today and enjoy the month and become the best version of yourself today and every day. I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.